computer in the video is my workstation PC which I use to render YouTube videos and use it for Photoshop and other stuff uh, I built this about two years ago uh, well nearly two years ago and have an i5 2400M uh, on this and uh, the parts I used uh, in this now are all the ones that I installed from the start and uh, I'm going to upgrade the CPU cooler in this because the, the, the one that I've got in here at the minute which is a Zolman CNPS performer is starting to get pretty noisy and the fan on it has always been quite noisy so uh, I thought I'd just do temperature check on idle so I'm not running anything at the minute fans at 1210 RPM Temperatures are pretty low, we've got 29 degrees on average. Uh, that's pretty good for an i5. Uh, but the fan, you know, speeds up quite fast uh, as soon as the CPU gets loaded. So, and just loading up uh, Sony Vegas here, you see the top core went to 36 for a second. The fan has started to uh, speed up. And uh, I, I mainly just use this PC to render videos. Um, I'll just put something into Sony Vegas quick. And load speed fan back up. Right, as soon as I press render, you can see the temperatures go really high. So pressing render now. I don't know if the, uh, the camera picks it up, but the uh, fan on the computer is going pretty fast. And temperature is slowly climbing. Probably the fan ramp up and it gets pretty loud. <laughs> and it gets to about 65 max from what I've seen, and by then the fan is at about 2700 RPM and it, it's really loud and obnoxious so I'm going to replace it today with something uh, a lot better which will hopefully help quiet this computer down so what I'm using is this this is an Arctic Cooling Freezer 7 Pro Revision 2 uh, CPU cooler it supports uh, uh, Intel 1150, 1366, 1156, 1155 and 755 sockets as well as pretty much every AMD socket however this particular cooler if you are using it on an AMD socket you can only mount it uh, vertically like that whereas on an Intel you can mount it horizontally but on an AMD it has to go vertically so if you you have an AMD set up like this and your case doesn't have a fan on the top and you're mounting this uh, like that uh, the, cooling, the cooling performance isn't going to be that good um, and it's just going to blow hot air into the power supply depending on where the power supply in your case is situated but uh, this the Freezer 7 Pro Revision 2 is mainly best for Intel sockets because you can mount it like that and have it so it blows air out the back of the case. Uh, you can get the one, I think it's the Freezer 7.1 <coughs> Pro or something, uh, which has a black fan and it works on the AMD boards and it, you can mount it horizontally like that. But the Freezer 7 Pro Revision 2, you can't mount it horizontally on the AMD boards. Anyway, uh, I got this off eBay for I think £17, so it's not that bad. Here's uh, just a quick look at the back. Main features, excellent cooling performance, 150 watts capability, so it can cool the CPU up to 150 watts fine. There's a 92mm PWM fan. Uh, three heat pipes going through the uh, aluminium heatsink. Uh, the fan is 
uh, has rubber grommets to hold it down so the vibration uh, back feed noise is uh, pretty low and it has pre-applied thermal paste which I don't like to use so I'm going to use Arctic Silver 5 which is very good thermal paste as I said in the other review I did of one of these cool well an arctic cooler uh, never use the pre-applied thermal paste because it tends to be old and uh, might not cool things as well <coughs> but, uh, yeah let's get the box open okay so to open the box on the freezer 7 pro spin it round to the back there are right, some little plastic latches here uh, there's two and then there's also one on the bottom here and actually I think that comes off by itself so you can take this front piece of plastic off and then to get the cooler out of the box sort of lift it out careful not to grab the frame of the fan uh, because this frame of the fan is pretty uh, flimsy and cheap if you pinch it together it will just crack the plastic so. and you can take the back piece off and then uh, there's this piece of card here which has the instruction manual. You can just take that off and here is the cooler. So let's just get a quick look at the heat sink and the fan. Um, so the fan has a 92mm, has a set of white blades on it. And I think this is what Arctic called the flower design fan, so the, the way the blades are orientated helps increase airflow or something uh, but it's an open frame type so that means that the frame of the fan is open so you can do that uh, I'm not too sure if that helps benefit uh, cooling but here you can see the rubber grommets that hold the fan to the frame and it does slightly move um, now those are good because they help stop vibrations from the motor of the fan going back onto the heatsink and then through to the computer which uh, causes noise and especially like the Zolman cooler that I have in my computer now uh, that doesn't have anything like that and uh, you can hear it vibrate back onto the case and in some cases you can actually feel it vibrate back to the computer so uh, but this uh, fan assembly is held onto the heatsink with some little plastic clips on the side you want to be careful of those if you do remove this fan make sure you use a proper pry tool and take it slow so if not you just crack it and then you won't be able to put the fan back on the heat sink uh, at the bottom we have a copper solid copper base uh, so it's not direct heat pipes but I prefer uh, heat sinks that have a solid copper base like this and then go onto the heat pipes which they then transfer heat to the aluminium fins which are uh, spaced apart so the fan can blow air through them and that's basically how it works I'll just take this and stuff out the bottom <coughs> so on the bottom we see our pre-applied thermal paste uh, I'm going to be removing that and cleaning it off and putting some new stuff on there's a little AMD badge there that's part of the uh, mountain hardware. Uh, and by the way, there's our PWM connector for the fan. I'm just going to put the heatsink aside. Here is the uh, mounting bracket for Intel sockets. So we're going to have to install this onto our board. And uh, then these two screws, or screw holes line up with these brackets on the bottom here and then we can screw the heat sink onto it so this is going to be installed onto our Intel board you do not need this for an AMD setup uh, here's the AMD bag of parts all you do is put two screws through and then the holes on the bottom there and then literally it tightens over the uh, heat sink brackets on the AMD board but for the Intel board we have uh, some more uh, stuff in the bag. Now these plastic lugs here actually I think push through here and then you use these lugs and you push them through to lock this down to the board and uh, there's two screws in there which 
go through there and hold the heatsink further to the board. So, <coughs> What I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean the base of the heatsink here and I'll show you how I do that. Alright, so what I uh, do to clean the heatsink is I have some uh, isopropanol alcohol. Uh, this is, I think, 99% or something. Um, but to clean off the old thermal paste, you get some tissue or paper towel, whatever. And you just want to scrape it all off first in clumps. And get it all off there try not to get it on your hands because it's pretty difficult to get off afterwards and you just create a load of mess so you want to clean off the majority of the thermal paste like that and then you want to get some more paper towel <coughs> and get your IPA spray it onto the tissue now, we need the IPA because it dis it literally just dissolves this old thermal paste. You just want to clean it off the base there. And uh, you can see that there's a fair bit more coming off there. And then, I'm going to go over that again. Let's spray a bit onto the heatsink if you want. And I'm just going to clean that all off so that the uh, base of the heatsink looks uh, shiny. You can't see any grey residue on there, so that looks good. So now what I'm going to do is get the computer off the desk and we'll go about installing this. Right, so I'm going to open up the computer now, and the case has two screws that hold the side panel on. Take those out. You can use their thumb screw type, uh, but I prefer to just take them out with a screwdriver. Then you pull the case lid back, and here's the inside. So here's our old CPU cooler here. Now there's a bit of plastic on the top here because uh, that's actually a fan shroud that I built. You know, I, I built that just because it guides the airflow from the heatsink to the rear exhaust fan. But we're going to take our old cooler off first, so you unplug the PWM connector, and this one has two screws on each side. Uh, it's probably easy just to unplug the CPU power connector. I'm just going to loosen those screws, and it just come off there. I'm also going to need to unplug that as well. Alright, so that's what it should look like when you remove the old heatsink. There's our CPU down there. We're going to want to clean off all that old thermal paste. The same method that we used to clean the base of the new heatsink. Here's the old uh, cooler. Uh, so, <coughs> we're going to get tissue and we're going to clean that off now. Okay, so uh, I'm going to firstly remove the uh, old heatsink bracket, which and we need to get out of the way, so the, on the sides there, there is these little plastic stoppers that hold it down and you just get a pair of needle nose pliers and you should just be able to pull them out, they're a bit stiff, there we go and when you pull those out you want to pull all four of them out Uh, then this old bracket should just come off. Now I'm taking this off before I clean the CPU just because it's a lot easier. So there's our old bracket off. So now what I'm going to do is clean this heat sink. <coughs> Again, the same method, just get some tissue paper. I'm just going to get the uh, majority of the old thermal paste off there. Like so. And spray the tissue. And 
And we need one more stroke over that, I'd say. <clears throat> that looks good. So that looks shiny clean. And that looks ready to get the new uh, heat sink on there. So now we're going to install the bracket. It's just a look at the instruction manual, <coughs> and it says which holes support which socket on this little bracket here. So the uh, centre hole I'm after supports my socket, which is 11.55. So these plastic lugs I'm going to push into the centre hole on this uh, bracket here. Alright, so we're going to now go on to installing the bracket onto this. So here's the bracket. And... We're after a socket 1155, so what we're going to do is we're not going to put this on the board, then align the pins because uh, that makes it a lot more difficult. So, if you look at this bracket, you'll notice that there's little slide or little slots. Uh, so, firstly, we're going to take the white push pins, and you'll see that they have like a cut off edge here. That edge goes facing inwards to the CPU. So, the bracket we want it so that the uh, two screws are facing to the exhaust fan. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to line up the bracket with the uh, two uh, holes there. Uh, it's pretty difficult to get onto the 1155 one, but that's how it should look. And when you get one in, it should be Pretty much easy after that. So now I'm going to take the others again. Take note of the cut off edge on the uh, push pin that goes inwards. I'm going to do more around uh, this cooler here. All right. So after we've got those in, uh, we're going to take the black push pins and again take note of the cut off edge there. <coughs> and it's pretty much the same, and that goes facing inwards to the CPU. And you just push them down like that. Might be a bit difficult to do, but. Uh, if if you find that it won't go in, do not force it because they have little plastic pins inside them and it will break off easy. And then you've trashed your bracket basically. And they don't include uh, spares either so you really don't want to mess anything up. Alright, so now we're going to get the heatsink mounted. And firstly, we're going to take our thermal paste. And I like to just add a little blob in the center of the CPU here. It's literally a little bit more, that'll do. That's literally how much you need. That's probably a bit too much, but it should be fine. Uh, so again, before we uh, mount the heatsink, we're just going to make sure that this bracket is on properly, and that is on solid. So, I can say I'm happy with that. So, uh, this is the end where the fan is, and as I said, I want the fan to be blowing the hot air through to the exhaust fan. Uh, you can put it the other way, but then it'll just be fighting for air, so... Uh, you're going to now drop this on here. Not drop it, just place it on there. And you're going to want to line up your screws. That might help to have a flashlight here. So I think that one is lined up. So the two most inner holes on this one will work. I think the outer ones for the AMD socket, so the inner ones are for the Intel socket, and the outer ones for the AMD type. So I'm going to take our screws. I'm just going to push them down in there and just tighten it up a little. You might need to push the bracket down slightly. Uh, 
There we go. I'm going to need a longer screwdriver for this. Let's <coughs> see uh, so if I can find it. I think I have one. Come on. So we're just going to tighten this down. Do a few uh, knots on one side and then a few knots on the other. Now you're going to want to tighten this until you feel that you can't uh, turn it easily and then you know it's pretty much done. And don't keep tightening it and don't push down really hard so you can tighten the screw. Um, so I'm just going to take a brand new screwdriver here just to make sure that this is properly in and I think that's almost on. Okay, that's on pretty solid I'd say. Oops. Just make sure it's uh, nice and tight, don't over tighten it. Because if you do that you'll just strip the screw heads. So. And I think that that heat sink is on there nice. So now we're going to put the fan back on. And I'm just going to take your PWM connector and plug it into the port down there. So it might be pretty difficult to do with one hand, but there we go. Okay. So now uh, we orientate the fan as it was and just uh, make sure you get it on there aligned properly. Do not push on the front of it where the frame is because that's just stupid and you'll damage the fan. So you just make sure both clips are on and they are. And as it's an open frame type of fan just make sure it still spins freely which it does. And the wires have come out of there a bit so I'm going to have to sort that out. But There we go. That's how you install an Arctic Cooling Freezer 7 Pro to a Socket 1155. That seems on there nice and solid. So uh, I'm going to get this on the desk and we're going to test this cooler. Alright so we're just going to power the computer on with the side of the case off just to ensure that the fan is spinning. It went pretty fast at the start there, I don't know if you heard that. Going to the BIOS. I'm going to go to PC Health Status. And there's the temperature, 33 degrees, and the fan is at 1,283 RPM. And I, I, can, I can't even hear the CPU cooler. The power supply fan is what I can hear. And that, that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is put the side of the case back on, then we can start rendering a video. So I'll put the side of the case on, and we're in Windows. Load up Speed Fan and Sony Vegas. There's the yoke. So we're at 35. The minute. 36 on some. <clears throat> it, it's slightly higher, I think the other one was, I don't know, I think if I just let it go down to zero it'll probably, yeah, I, it is a lot quieter than the other one which probably means that it doesn't move as much air but, and I think the max temperature when rendering on the uh, other cooler was about uh, 65 so what I'm going to do is render a video. Oh, it's random. You can hear the fans speeding up.
Uh, it's not gone above 50 yet. Oh, wait. Alright, so what I'm going to do is render another video. See what happens. <coughs> uh, I can't render that twice because it will glitch out. To render that. No, I need to sort through all the videos that I've got. Okay. Uh, just call that sort of random. I've got two videos rendering now. It's gone to 99% load. That is pretty quiet, and the fan is actually like the the movement of air sounds a lot better than the original cooler. So I'm rendering a third video. I normally tend to render four at a time. <laughs> I know I probably shouldn't because it just slows everything down, but yeah, I do anyway. Grab whatever videos I got. Oh, that's probably a bit too short. It's doing pretty well. I'll give it that. So I've got three videos on at the minute. Gone to 100% load. And it's below 60. By now, with the other cooler, it was at uh, pushing 60, 60 or 62 or so, if I remember. I should have actually filmed it, but I was a dork and I didn't. It is do it's doing pretty well to be fair. Oops. And as you see the computer hasn't really slowed down much. I'm gonna render twelve videos in this document. <laughs> No, that next one. Alright, so I've got four videos rendering at the minute, so as you can see. And 100% full load. We're at 55, I'd say the max. Whereas before, it would have been at 65, and the cooler would have been a lot louder. The fan is audible, but it's better than the Zalman one, and the air coming out of that is pretty warm too. So yeah, I think that's uh, successful. That's why fans are good. So yeah, I think that's been a successful upgrade. I'm going to close all those windows, and the load should disappear. It's just going back to idle temperature. The graphics card's at 55 because it's it doesn't have a fan. It's one of those little ones that has a, a heat sink uh, with no fan. Those tend to get pretty warm. But my main concern is the CPU, which is doing really well at the minute. So I think that's been a good upgrade. Certainly worth the £17 I paid for it, and now my computer doesn't have, uh, an, uh, let's say, a buzzing noise uh, anymore to what that old cooler had. So that's been a installation and review of the Arctic Cooling Freezer 7 Pro. Thanks for watching.